Okay, Assalamualaikum. Boleh dengar eh, suara saya? Okay. Yeah. Let's begin our class with Rumah Kitab Al-Fatihah. Okay, so can you see my slide? Uh, topic three. Yes. Okay, so last week we uh, we have finished until uh, uh, intermolecular forces. Okay, so this week we will finish uh, the topic three. But before that, uh, let's recap. Okay, so okay. So, um, okay, so before we move to the another subtopic 3.8, so uh, I want to recap a little bit, okay? So, you have learned on the intermolecular forces. So, we have uh, three types of intermolecular forces. Actually, ada banyak daripada ni, tapi um, the one that you should know and the very important uh, intermolecular forces are these trees lah. Okay, so we have uh, London dispersion forces. So, this is the weakest uh, attraction okay so uh, occurs uh, in all molecules so uh, either the polar or non-polar okay and then we have dipole dipole forces this one is only for polar molecules and also we have the special dipole dipole where we call it hydrogen bond where it has hydrogen bonded with either or f o n for eh? okay so um to get um uh, to or uh, to know uh, um, what is the type of intermolecular forces uh, occurs in, in the molecule uh, any molecular compound okay so you must to you must know the polarity of the molecules okay so nak dapatkan uh, intermolecular forces kena tahu dulu polarity whether it is polar or non-polar so to get the polarity of the molecules you must get the molecular geometry. So, you nampak tak? Dia ada sequence dia kat situ. So, maknanya from intermolecular forces, you have to know the polarity of the molecules. From that polarity, you tak boleh simply ambil daripada Lewis structure, you terus, okay, this is polar or non-polar. No. You have to get the the correct shape, the correct geometry. Uh, baru you boleh buat uh, vector addition, right? Okay. Yang macam saya selalu cakap about um, tarik tali kan. So macam uh, make sure magnitude dia sama. Eh, kalau tarik tali, you boleh cancel that magnitude. So dia tak akan pergi mana. Tapi kalau ada one yang lagi kuat, of course dia akan tertarik pada yang kuat tu. So sama konsep dia dengan uh, this uh, bonding lah for polarity. Okay. So maknanya meaning that um, for the whole chapter 3 yang you belajar ni actually semuanya walaupun ada subtopik yang berbeza-beza tapi semuanya ada kaitan lah. Okay. So that's why this uh, intermolecular forces are really uh, you work closely with the polarity. So of course polarity you will work closely with the molecular geometry. Okay. So you dah belajar all the types and then explanation dia and also the strength and Kita ada juga factors affecting the strength of the intermolecular forces. Okay. So, now we will go to <coughs> the last subtopic for this chapter. Okay. Metallic bond. Okay. So, you, so in the chemical bonding chapter 3, okay, you learn about um, ionic bond and then covalent bond yang paling banyak sekali yang you belajar up until intermolecular forces and now uh, we'll go to metallic bond. Sikit saja kita tak sentuh banyak okay so uh, at the end of this subtopic okay you should be able to uh, explain the metallic bond using the electron C model okay later I will explain what is the ele electron C model and then explain the physical properties of the metal explain the trend and the factors that affect the strength of metallic bond so based on predictable jugalah. Okay. So when you look at this eh, metallic bond is the force that holds atom together in the metallic substances. So maksudnya um, you are the metal so bond tu berlaku dekat dalam tu lah uh, between the atoms. 
Okay, so metallic bond results from the attraction between metal cations. So kita ada positive charge from metal and also the valence electron. So the negative charge is actually came from valence electron. Kalau dalam ion ni, dia datang daripada anion lah. Kan? Uh, this one datang daripada electrons. So electron apa? Valence electron. So the concept is, uh, it can be demonstrated by the electron C model. Okay, electron C, so lautan electron. So you imagine macam laut lah. Okay, so this electron uh, C model uh, basically actually contribute by uh, the valence electron. Electron tu daripada valence lah. They form delocalized electron. Ataupun delocalized electron tu kita panggil C. Maksud dia kat sini, okay, delocalized. Localized maksudnya local lah setempat. Okay, kalau delocalized dia tak setempat. Meaning that electron tu dia boleh move freely kan elektron dia boleh bergerak-gerak kan so bila dia bergerak tu yang akan membentuk macam lautan elektron dekat um, kat ion yang dah tersusun okay so uh, basically dalam gambar ni lah so elektron ni kan dia ada elektron, elektron, elektron tu so dia boleh move freely lah so that, kat mana-mana pun dia boleh pergi so that's why they imagine a sea of elektron okay so the physical properties uh, of the metal, of course it has high melting and boiling point because of the strong attraction between metal and uh, the valence electron which is the delocalized electron. Okay, so bila attraction to cut, of course you perlukan uh, energy yang lebih tinggi untuk uh, overcome that uh, attraction lah. Ni pun sama lah, kita lebih pada mention about strong attraction even though, even though it has metallic bond. Okay, so these metals are malleable, it can be flattened or hammered into sheets. Okay, contoh, you ada satu bentuk tu, then you boleh lepe kan, boleh ketuk and then ductile can be drawn into wires like this. Okay, so this is due to the ability of the atoms to roll over each other into new positions. Dia takkan, dia tak macam ionic, dia tak break, dia tak brittle, dia tak, dia tak boleh, dia tak akan break lah bila kalau ionic, you pecahkan, dia pecah. So you bagi hammer, dia pecah. But this one, you bagi hammer, dia just deform lah. Okay. So metals conduct heat and electricity lah. Of course, um, as compared to uh, ionic, kalau solid, dia tak boleh conduct electricity, right? So this one, uh, it can conduct because even though dia, uh, dia metal solid lah kan, because due to the delocalized electron. It's about electron tu sendiri dah bergerak. Okay. Saya tambah another... Uh, figure untuk explain on the um, why the reason uh, 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 metals deform uh, dia tak crack atau tak shatter. Kalau ingat balik previously dalam uh, ionic kita mention about positive negative charge. Bila you ketuk uh, positif tu akan berubah kan. So bila positif dengan asalnya kan disusun akan jadi um, alternately kan dia akan susun alternately. So Bila you ketuk, so kat sini akan dia akan jadi positif dengan positif. So that's why bila positif dengan positif dia akan ada repulsion. So that's why dia akan crack. Okay. Tapi kalau metal, dia still memang akan susun positif-positif macam ni. Sebab in between dia tu, in the middle ke kat mana-mana tu, ada elektron. Elektron C. Okay. So that's why, that's why bila ketuk dia cuma deform saja. Dia tak akan uh, break lah. Okay, ini um, physical properties yang paling common lah untuk metal eh. Okay, so now we move to the strength of metallic bond. <coughs> okay, so uh, for the metallic bond, okay, so uh, other factors affecting strength of metallic bond ada tiga eh. Ionic size or radius, ionic charge and also the valence electron. So trend across the period. So basically across the period, okay, kan you belajar you belajar, okay ni kan, across the period. So basically sebenarnya untuk metallic bond across the period tu adalah group 1 and group 2 saja. Sebab yang lain bukan metal kan. So basically even kita mention about the representative element lah eh, tak termasuk um, apa uh, metal dekat sini. Apa? Uh, metal yang kat tengah tu lah. Okay, yang block D tu kan. So Bila kita kata across the period, maksudnya biasanya kita akan compare between group 1 and group 2. Okay. So group 2 have higher melting point than group 1 because of the smaller size. Okay. Ini belajar in terms of ionic size kan. Across the period, 
size makin kecil kan Okay so because of the smaller size uh, And the electron C has twice as many valence electron Maksudnya kalau group 1 for example you have sodium Charge the positive 1 so maksudnya valence you only have one electron But if you go for Mg2 plus okay so Mg group 2 kan They are the two valence electron So can you imagine now Uh, dah lah dia saiz dia kecil Lepas tu elektron dia pula ada banyak Dua kali ganda daripada uh, group 1 right So that's why it will uh, resulting in stronger attraction Among the metal ions Okay and then Trend going down the group For example group 1 atau group 2 lah Going down the group Okay we know that atomic radial increases Tetap because the uh, N eh N increase value of shell dia bertambah so set size besar here the ionic charge stay constant tu tak dia tak berubah charge dia still positive one still positive two but the charge density decreases so what does it mean by the charge density okay so charge density is the ratio between ionic charge and radius so of course lah bila ratio maksudnya bila radius akan ada lah juga case radius makin besar tapi charge dia maintain. So what will happen? Okay. So here it will result in the weaker attraction among the metals. Ion yang makin bawah lah. Okay. So let's look at this example. Arrange the following elements according to decreasing metallic bond strength. Decreasing. Okay. Maksudnya daripada yang tinggi kepada yang rendah lah. Eh. Justify your answer. Okay. So you have AL and EMG. So AL... Let's say lah, kalau dia jadi kat ion, this is L3+, plus, this is Na+, plus, this is Lg2+. Plus. Maknanya, you have one valence electron, you have two electrons. This one, you have three electrons. Macam saya cakap tadi lah. Okay. Uh, makin ke, uh, yang ni kebetulan dia semua period yang sama. Okay. So, makin ke kanan akan makin kecil size dia. So, this is the smallest. Okay. Dalam masa yang sama, this is the smallest and this also have uh, the smallest size and this also have the uh, highest valence electron value. Ada tiga. Kalau yang ni, the bigger lah. The biggest have valence electron dia ada satu je. So yang ni uh, in the middle. So valence electron dia dua. Okay. So how to justify? You can uh, macam saya cakap tadi lah. Okay, tadi saya mention about Na plus. So, it ha it has the biggest ionic radius. So, si size dia besar. Ionic charge pun dia the smallest because dia cuma ada um, positive one. Ada satu saja elektron untuk for each um, atom. So, that's why bila kurang uh, sikit, so less lah di localized elektron. Kan lagi banyak elektron, lagi mudah lah movement of elektron tu kan. And lagi banyak lah attraction between elektron dengan positive charge tu. Okay so ni sebab ada satu je Bila positif tu dia in the middle Size dia pun kecil sikit daripada positif uh, one And then uh, charge dia pun uh, banyak sikit Okay but if you have L3 plus of course Lagi kecil size dia and then charge dia pun lagi banyak So more this, this is the most delocalized electron lah Yang ada as compared to other tubes And it has the strongest metallic strength Okay so clear eh Simple je untuk uh, strength ni. Eh. Okay, ni Andi tadilah trend, uh, trend, trend of the strength of metallic bond eh. So uh, basically across the period strength increase and down the group strength decrease. Okay, let's look at this checkpoint. Maybe kita buat sama-sama lah untuk yang ni eh. Arrange the following element according to increasing. Tadi decreasing ni increasing metallic bond strength. Maksudnya from lowest to highest eh. Justify your answer. So sama lah. Okay so first bila you dapat ni you keluarkan dulu. Okay this one is uh, will become K plus. Mg2 plus. This one is Ca2 plus. Okay dia tak ada 3 plus. Ada 2 plus dengan plus je. So K plus. Uh, positive one paling kiri kan so dia is the smallest in size and charge dia pun um, ada positive one so maksudnya valence elektron dia ada satu saja 
How about this one? Uh, the in the middle lah. Size kita tak boleh kata is the uh, highest sebab this one also MG2+. MG2+, CA2+. So you nak compare, of course MG2+, maksudnya sekarang yang paling kecil, kita dah tahu dah, K paling kecil. Uh, cuma nak tahu ni siapa. Okay, between MG2+, and C2+, because the group yang sama, now we can compare in order of um, down the group. Okay, so we have MG2+, and C2+, lagi bawah decreasing of, decreasing strength of metallic bond kan. So lagi bawah mana tadi? Ha, so ni lagi bawah. So maksudnya you akan letak CA dulu baru MG lah. Okay. So for the justification. So tadi K plus you boleh lah mention sama macam yang tadi. So this is the biggest ionic radius with the smallest ionic charge. So less delocalized electron. This is the weakest metallic strength. So MG2 plus um, smaller lah. Okay smaller Maybe uh, you can, you boleh tengok antara dua ni lah. The, we mentioned about this is the smallest because CA2 plus also small but it's bigger than MG2 plus. Why? Kalau you tengok ionic charge pun sama. This is positive 2, this is also positive 2. Okay, yang membezakan adalah this one uh, located at um, below MG. Okay, so that's why ionic charge stay constant but the charge density decreases. Okay, thus uh, it has the weaker metallic strength bond as compared to uh, MG2 plus eh. Ni untuk explanation untuk justification lah kejap eh. Okay. So far okay eh, boleh faham? Oh habis dah. Uh, untuk ni. So untuk uh, metallic bond basically kita akan tanya in terms of strength lah. Paling standard um, uh, apa uh, apa kita panggil tu. You buat dia punya arrange. Arrange uh, following atoms according to dia punya strength and then you nak arrange tu you have to know the factors lah affecting the strength eh. Okay, ada apa-apa soalan tak nak tanya sebelum kita pergi pada topik 4. Faham. Faham eh? Okay. So, jom. Now we will move to chapter 4. Okay, boleh nampak tak? <coughs> boleh nampak eh? Tep, uh, top four, eh? Boleh. State of matter. Boleh. So um, basically kalau ikutkan minggu ni week 10 um, kita akan masuk uh, state of matter lah. Uh, topik 3 tu patutnya habis last week tapi tak apalah tinggal sikit je pun kan. Okay. So what does the meaning by state of matter? So state of matter tu uh, we when we always say to you when you do the physical balancing equation bukan physical lah balancing equation I always state that uh, okay you have to write a physical state. Physical state tu tu lah solid, liquid, gas. Itu yang paling biasa lah. Sometimes adalah aqueous lah kan. Yeah, solid, liquid, gas. So eh gas. So this is a, a state of matter lah. But um, from these three solid liquid gas dalam topik state of matter uh, I would say uh, almost all, almost all eh 4.1 until 4.6 kita cover topik untuk gas sahaja. And then 4.7 baru kita masuk liquid and kita tak ada cover langsung untuk solid. Okay kalau ikut nak cover untuk semua memang berpuluh-puluh subtopik lah. Okay, even untuk gas pun tak semua ni. Kita just um, pick a few yang um, I think really important. Okay. So um, liquid pun you tengok just only one subtopic kan. Uh, dulu sebenarnya if I'm not mistaken lagi banyak lah sebelum saya cuti. Sebelum ni sebab saya ada cuti dua tahun. So sebelum saya cuti tu saya sempatlah ajar I mean the liquid tu banyak jugalah saya ajar tapi now dia dah kurangkan 
maybe because of tak nak um, compactkan sangat you punya content tu kan kalau tak nanti stress sangat kan belajar banyak very packed okay so um, basically I think for the gas loss for 4.1 you have learned uh, during your school okay during your secondary school and then the rest tu lah kuat maybe uh, the new topic for you lah Okay, so we move to the gas law first, okay, 4.1. So at the end of this subtopic, you should be able to describe Boyce, Charles and Avogadro's law and also solve the quantitative problems. So here, <coughs> bila kita sebut quantitative, maksudnya uh, you must involve with the calculation. Okay, so you dah tinggalkan calculator uh, untuk dua topik, chapter 2 and chapter 3. Bukanlah tinggal langsung calculation kan You ada lah juga kena kira elektron But uh, maksudnya yang very compact one Yang macam segala benda nak kena kira ah uh, tu chapter one kan So now kita masuk balik pada calculation lah Okay so the gas laws describe the physical behavior of gases In terms of four variables So of course uh, gas dia akan um, Dia tak boleh lari daripada pressure Okay and then temperature boleh berubah and then uh, volume Okay lepas tu amount. Amount ni uh, kita lebih relatekan dengan number of moles Okay so there are three bases of a uh, more general law of gas which is Boyle's, Charles and Avogadro's law If I'm not mistaken uh, Boyle's dengan Charles ni you dah belajar kat sekolah Avogadro's ni je yang kita relatekan dengan number of moles ni Okay ni you akan belajar kat sini lah Okay Sebenarnya kan uh, law ada banyak kalau ikutkan tapi kita fokus on this part lah and then kita boleh play around with that law untuk cari benda-benda uh, untuk cari uh, other relationship lah. Okay. Sebelum kita pergi pada all the laws yang you perlu tahu okay. The unit and conversion is very important especially for the unit of pressure. Okay because pressure ada banyak unit. Okay and unit yang Paling selalu kita pakai ada empat ni lah. Okay. Even empat ni pun tiga yang paling kerap. Okay. Which is uh, atmosphere, ATM. And then we have tor and also millimeter mercury and also pascal. So normally, normally ATM, tor and millimeter mercury tu paling selalu lah. Okay. Pascal ni ada tapi jarang-jarang. Okay. Ada lagi unit lain lah. Tapi kita fokus on this part. Okay. So conversion is uh, one ATM. ATM is uh, our pressure now, then right now, okay, it's 1 ATM, is equals to 760 tor uh, or 760 millimeter mercury or 101325 pascal. Okay, so you ingat conversion ni, the rest tu you convert dah sendiri. Okay, you akan dapat all of this value. Okay, so value of tor and millimeter mercury sama is equals to 1 atm okay and then this one is for pressure and then we have temperature so uh, in the uh, this gas laws kita banyak pakai on the uh, absolute temperature absolute maksudnya dia mesti dalam kelvin okay kita tak pakai sangat di celsius ni kita pakai kelvin lah okay and bila pakai kelvin you have to add 273 uh, untuk dapat that value of kelvin Okay, so uh, ni ada pembetulan sikit sebenarnya dia bukanlah salah. Okay, dia uh, dia lebih tepat sebenarnya ada 0.15 ni. Tapi sebab kita nak standardizekan for the whole book, kita hilangkan 0.15 so di equals to 274 je lah. Okay, other than that conversion of the volume. Okay, you paling selalu kita pakai biasanya unit dia adalah liter atau dm cube kan. Cuma soalan suka bagi dalam unit cm cube. So you have to convert to uh, liter lah. Okay from cm cube to liter. And ada juga case nanti saya akan tunjuk lah masa bila kita ada tiba-tiba terjumpa pula volume dalam bentuk meter cube. Okay still you have to know that uh, conversion unit dia macam mana lah eh. Okay now for uh, Boyce law. So Boyce law is actually a relationship between P and V, uh, pressure and also volume. Okay, so here it mentioned about it is inversely proportional. P, a uh, volume is inversely proportional to the external pressure. 
Maksudnya berkadar songsang. Okay, so V, ha, this one eh, inversely proportional to P. Okay, or bila you rearrange balik, you akan dapat like this lah, PV equals to constant. So, bila inversely proportional, P decrease, V will increase and vice versa. Okay. So, macam mana kita nak uh, explain in terms of ke, macam mana boleh dapat inversely proportional kan? Okay, so actually dia dapat daripada satu eksperimen ni. Memang eksperimen for boys law. Okay, this is the relation to to get the relationship between volume and pressure of gas lah. So, kita tahu tadi volume tinggi, P akan ren jadi rendah. Dia terbalik kan? Okay, so macam mana? If you look at this, uh, dia buat eksperimen guna J tube eh, bentuk J ni. Okay, so contohlah eh, kita nak nak ambil pressure dekat, uh, uh, sorry, kita nak ambil volume kat dalam ni, volume apa? Volume of gas. Kosong lah, kita ada mercury kat sini kan, so sini kosong, so dia dah trap kat sini. So yang trap ni kita sebenarnya nak measure berapa volume dia. Okay, let's say lah kat sini volume dia 20. Uh, so bila dia tengok, uh, biasanya dia nak tengok Ketinggian ni kan dia punya tapak kan So ketinggian berapa Kat sini ah Ketinggian ni is actually 20mm 20mm Apa dia? Kat sini lah sebenarnya datangnya sejarah Millimeter Mercury Sebenarnya because oh, okay. Sebenarnya because of Dia punya uh, ni, Ketinggian ni Okay So kita tahu millimeter mercury sama juga dengan 20 tau. Lepas tu kalau you tengok kat sini delta H ni height dia kan ketinggian dia. Height dia is equals to this 20 tau. So basically inilah datangnya. Saya lupa nak check uh, tau ni tak ingat nama orang ke apa tapi dia relationship dia dia tak selesai nama orang yang buat eksperimen ni lah. If I'm not mistaken lah eh, nanti you boleh check. Tapi millimeter mercury ni is because of this one lah. Dia dapat daripada height of the mercury. So that's why dia kata millimeter mercury. Tapi sebenarnya ni unit untuk pressure. Kan? Okay. Lepas tu alkisah dia macam mana? Okay so kat sini dia uh, have to include the atmosphere lah. Uh, dia tak boleh uh, sini saja sebab logiknya benda ni open kan. So include the atmosphere pressure. Contohlah uh, 20 ml so pressure dia 780 daripada 20 ton ni kan. Let's say kita add more mercury sampai dia jadi double. So delta H will become 800 daripada 20 tadi jadi 800. What will happen to the volume? So volume nampak tak dia berkurang. So volume will become half daripada yang 20 asal. Okay. Okay. So, sekejap saya tengah tengah terfikir saya macam tengah nak teringat ada something yang macam uh, saya tadi ada explain dekat kelas saya yang sebelum ni tapi saya lupa. Okay so tapi tak takpelah so bila saya explain balik kat sini bila you tengok balik kat sini P dengan V kan uh, so uh, bila you tengok bila you masukkan uh, delta H ni 800 so uh, volume kat sini berkurang so volume kat sini 20 ml so uh, asalnya tadi 20 kat sini 20 juga bila you add 800 so P kat sini akan berkurang lah eh sorry V, V eh so kat sini lah relationship between uh, pressure and volume okay so bila you tengok kat sini 800mm dia akan jadi 800 tau okay so um, and then in terms of molecular view Okay so tadi uh, just based on experiment and you tahu okay P uh, relationship dia dengan V kan So now uh, we move to the molecular view so actually what is uh, what is actually happening Apa yang berlaku sebenarnya kat dalam tu okay so kita explain in terms of molecular view So the pressure is actually caused by the molecule striking to the sides of the container You can imagine dalam satu bekas tu Pressure tu datang daripada bila molecules tu dia berlanggar dengan uh, sides of the container ataupun wall container tu. Kat situ datangnya uh, pressure tu. So okay let's say uh, originally let's say you know that okay the volume is 1 liter. Okay uh, first uh, kita dah assume lah bila 1 liter pressure yang diukur dekat dalam ni is 1 atm. 
Okay. When you decrease the volume. So macam ni nak decrease the volume, kita tambah extra pemberat lah. So do you turunkan that volume. Okay. So bila you turun that volume, so the volume uh, will become lesser. So volume is equals to 0.5. So let's say lah volume tu dah berkurang. So what will happen inside the container? Dah berkurang kan? Molecule dekat dalam tu kekal sama. Okay, you tengok sini. Container with the same number of molecules. So molecule dia sama. So more molecules will hit the wall at the same instant. So thus increase the pressure inside here. So pressure will become increased. P equals to 2 atm. You imagine macam apa ya? Lift lah eh. So macam contoh lift asalnya uh, dua orang tu dalam lift tiba-tiba buka uh, naik tingkat berapa uh, ramai masuk. So kat situ uh, kita assume Uh, tak ada pergerakan lah. Tapi bila gas ni kita tahu ada ada pergerakan. That's why ada pressure kan. So kat, even kat situ pun dia dah jadi pack. Eh jap. Saya tak boleh. Saya tak boleh nak compare dengan lift lah. Sorry sorry. Itu itu uh, contoh untuk kalau you mall bertambah. Okay. Sorry sorry. <laughs> Saya tak boleh nak compare dengan tu. Okay. So kita stick balik pada this contoh yang tadi lift tu untuk bila mall bertambah. Kalau in this case Uh, mall sama tapi you compresskan size tu makin sempit so so you imagine lah makin sempit maknanya uh, that mm, gas tu still bergerak kan so cuma dia bila bergerak dia makin banyak lah dia nak hit the wall okay so that's why pressure kat dalam tu akan tinggi so kalau you plot the graph okay so you have P and you have V Okay, so because this is inversely proportional, contoh you have 2 liter, uh, so this is the pressure, It, you increase the volume, they decrease the pressure, so dia akan uh, menurun lah. Tapi you can get a straight line when you, um, apa, you buat relationship between P and also 1 over V. Okay, so you akan dapat straight line kat situ. And then if you have more than 1, I mean uh, the pressure and volume tu, you nak tengok uh, what will happen if you change the pressure or change the volume, you can combine, uh, you can uh, ni lah, uh, combine all this untuk dapatkan relationship. So P1, V1 equals to P2, V2. So tengok contoh kat sini. Okay, dia kata air trapped in the J tube occupies 24.8 cm cube. So this is volume. So add this one pressure. So by adding mercury Hg to the tube, the pressure on the trap air increased to 2.64 atm. So this one is pressure jugalah. So assuming the constant temperature, so T constant, so determine the new volume. So V berapa. So you can use uh, this formula lah. Okay. So dia nak in liter, so that's why the volume you must change to liter lah. Okay, so masukkan je lah eh, substitute. I think this one you also know lah eh. Okay, please try this checkpoint. Cuba tengok dapat tak uh, jawapan kat sini dia tak minta volume dalam apa. So, sama ada ml atau liter lah. Jawapan ni ml. Cuba jawab jap. One minute. Okay, dah kira ke? Dapat tak? Dapat siapa tak? Dapat. Dapat. Okay. So, dia paling senang lah kan guna this one eh. P2, V2. Okay. So, this one eh. Dia paling senang biasanya before anything you senaraikan dulu supaya tak tertukar-tukar. So, which one is P1, which one is V1 and then P2, V2. Apa yang you nak cari. Ah, So, My suggestion is you keluarkan dulu all the uh, informations given lah. Okay and then baru you keluarkan okay you nak cari apa guna formula apa eh. 
Okay. And then we move to the next law. Okay, so we have Charles law. So tadi boys law between P and V. So now it's Charles law. So this one is between V and T, volume and temperature. So its uh, volume is uh, directly proportional to its absolute temperature, just in Kelvin. Eh? Okay, T. So V, T. So bila you nak um, susun balik, ia akan jadi V over T lah, equals to constant. So here, V increase, T increase and vice versa lah. Okay, so how we want to explain in terms of molecular view? So apa sebenarnya yang berlaku dekat dalam tu? Okay, so you have to know that the pressure of the gas inside and outside, okay, of the balloons are the same. Kita tengok contoh balloon lah in this case eh. So kita assume pressure dia sama. So if at high temperature, for example, we put uh, the balloon um, on the boiling water. I am didi kita letak balloon tu. So the gas of molecule in the balloon are moving faster. So for high temperature, bila kita cerita pasal mo uh, movement, normally we will re uh, relate it with the high, with the kinetic energy. Tak kisahlah uh, dalam air sejuk ke, air panas ke, apa-apa uh, movement melibatkan temperature is actually related to kinetic energy. Okay, so here high temperature moving faster so they hit the sides of the balloon harder. So imagine tolak, 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 tolak so balloon tu akan jadi makin lebar lah, makin besar eh. So causing the larger volume while for the low temperature so dia terbalik lah, dia tak, it's not moving fast so they don't hit the sides of the balloon as hard. So therefore the volume is small. Okay. So if you uh, plot the graph, okay, volume versus um, temperature, if I'm not sure, T, T rupiah kecil untuk time, T rupiah besar tu nye, T. Okay, it is a straight line lah sebab dia uh, directly proportional. Okay, maksudnya volume increase, temperature pun increase. Okay, tapi dia punya straight line tu last sekali dia akan berjumpa pada satu tempat uh, at volume equals to zero. Okay, maksudnya bila tak ada volume lah, dia akan berjumpa dekat absolute zero. Okay, where it is a negative 273 uh, Kelvin, eh sorry, uh, degree Celsius. Okay. So, ini pun sama ya, eh? VT. Ini relationship dia V dengan T eh. Okay. So, for examples, sama lah kes dekat sini, we have volume, okay. Nitrogen under pressure. So, dia bagi pressure kat sini and then this is the temperature. So, calculate the volume. So, volume maknanya volume 2 lah. This is volume 1. That will occupy at 3, 2, 3 Kelvin. So, this is T2, this is T1. So, basically this pressure is actually constant. And N also constant sebab kita guna tank yang sama, nitrogen yang sama. Okay, sebab tu mole dia tak berubah lah. Yang ni pun dah beritahu kan, if the pressure and amount of gas are keep constant. So again, keluarkan semua information. You get this formula, substitute all the information given. Then dapat lah. Okay, ni untuk Charles. Okay, cuba jawab ni. Check point number two. Kita try tengok dapat tak jawapan sama lah.
Okay, dah. So, kita tengok eh. So, basically, again, um, sebenarnya kalau kalau macam ni, dia tak ada isu pun kalau you tak convert this temperature to Kelvin, okay. Sebab you still akan cancel the units. Cuma to be careful, um, better you convert lah. Sebab nanti later, you akan belajar on ideal, ideal gas, uh, you must use Kelvin. Absolute. Ada reason lah kenapa Kelvin tu eh. Okay. Sebab ni pun dia tak mention final volume apa unit dia tapi sebab kat sini dah liter that's why kita put as liter lah eh. Okay. Next we move to Avogadro's law. Okay. So Avogadro's is actually a relationship between volume and mole. So also directly proportional. Okay. Volume directly proportional to the number of gas molecule. So this uh, gas molecule are actually related to mole lah. Okay. Kita calculate using mole. Okay. Uh, again. Sebab dia directly proportional. So when you uh, plot the graph volume versus mole. So you akan dapat straight line sebab dia dari proportional lah. Volume increase, mole pun increase eh. So kalau you tengok kat sini, volume bertambah sebab mole bertambah kan. For example, we have three hydrogen. So maksudnya ada tiga molecule of hydrogen. So tiga molecule referring to three moles. So these three moles have three volume. So every each of this uh, molecule ada volume dia sendiri. Lepas tu dia ada banyak lah tiga. And then kalau nitrogen ada satu saja, ammonia ada dua. Okay. So that's why V increase, N pun akan increase eh. Ataupun oh sorry basically sebenarnya N increase, V pun akan increase. Okay so again for let's say for the example. Okay mention here. Uh, saya tak baca full lah eh. Okay volume asal. Uh, it's 55 dm cube and then when 1.1 mole of helium is added to the blame the volume changes to 26.2. Calculate the new mass in gram of helium that must be added. Okay bila melibatkan mole ah uh, nampak tak dia tak tanya mole pun dia akan tanya mass. Uh, ikut suka dia kan sebab mole ni kita akan always relate um, make a relationship. Uh, sorry mole equals to Mass over molar mass kan. So here you still boleh cari lah. Cuma bila you calculate, okay first of course you have to find mole lah. Okay daripada information given. So dah dapat mole kat sini. Dia nak mass kan. Tapi kalau you tengok balik, calculate the new mass of grams of the helium gas that must be added. Maksudnya, okay you imagine dalam satu bekas tu kan dia ada helium tadi. Okay so asal Uh, helium 1.1 Asal pressure Eh sorry Volume 55 DM cube Dia masuk lagi helium Dia DM cube ni Dia drop to 26.2 Dia tanya berapa mass ni Bila dimasukkan So bila you calculate uh, perubahan mol kat situ adalah perubahan mol yang ada dalam ni. Dia nak yang kat sini. Okay so that's why kalau you tengok step after you dapat mol, you have to calculate the additional amount of helium needed. So mol 2.31 is the mol yang yang dah berubah after dah masukkan helium tadi kan. Mol yang dah berubah. So mol asal is 1.1. So mol yang dimasukkan yang must be added ni is 1.21 je sebenarnya. Okay, I hope you are clear with this uh, kind of question lah eh. Kena take note lah eh. Kena hati-hati dia tak boleh macam oh sebenarnya ni je mol dia. Uh, no, sebenarnya kena tolakkan dulu. Dia dapat mol yang di, must be added ni, ha, yang ni barulah kita cari mass dia. Okay. So checkpoint number three. Okay, yang ni cuba jawab ni. Ni pun sebenarnya sama. Calculate the number of moles of gas added. Okay, cuba kira. Kat sini pun dah ada bagi dah molar mass. Ah, yang ni tak ada minta mass pun. Dia kira molar, uh, mol je. Cuba kira. Basically lebih kurang macam tadilah.
Okey. Dah ke? <coughs> Dah. Okey. So kita tengok eh. So basically. Okey sekejap tengok balik soalan eh. A flexible container uh, at initial volume. Okey ni initial volume. Maksudnya container ni boleh berubah volume ni lah. So initial volume uh, is 5.12 liter. So V1. And then dia ada, uh, dia tak ada mole tapi dia ada mass. Okay. And then um, more gas is then added. So masuk lagi gas. So final volume dia bertambah. Okay. So assuming the pressure and temperature of the gas remain constant, calculate the number of moles added. So of course V dengan N, you actually want to get uh, N lah. Betul tak? Tapi sebabkan N dia tak directly N, dia mass. So you have to find uh, mass over molar mass. And then masukkan dekat dalam N1. Okay. Then you will calculate for N2. So dapat N2. Again sama juga dia nak N yang added kan. So ini N yang macam uh, total. Total dengan asal. So 30.049 tolaklah dengan N yang asal. So you dapatlah N added eh. Okay ni lebih sama lah macam tadi eh. Okay, so uh, after you have finished all the law yang dah belajar, okay, Boyce law, PV, Charles law, uh, uh, V and T and Avogadro's uh, V dengan N. We actually can combine all of this together, okay, uh, in order to get uh, other relationship. Okay, contoh macam kita ada P dengan V, V, T, V, N. Kita tak ada P dengan T kan? P dengan T ataupun V, eh apa ya? P dengan T ataupun P dengan N. Contohlah. You nak buat relationship tu tak ada. So you can combine all of these three. Okay. Combine dia. Kita jadikan dia macam ni. Contoh dia tak kisah sebenarnya you nak letak apa pun kat depan ni. Contoh kita ambil satu kita letak V. So V equals to N T over P. So V is directly proportional to N, T and inversely proportional to P. Okay, kalau you letak kat sini P, V kat bawah ni lah and vice versa eh. Okay, so if you combine sama jugalah let's say you ada dua condition yang berbeza final dengan initial, you boleh buat macam ni eh. P1 V1 over N1 T1 equals to P2 V2 over uh, N2 T2. Okay, sekejap eh. Okay, so tengok contoh. At 25 degree Celsius, okay this is temperature. The pressure in the cylinder containing 5 mole of gas, so N, is 5.1 atm. Calculate the number of moles. So this is N1. That should be released to maintain the constant pressure. So P, constant. When the temperature is increased to 2, 4, 5. T2, this is T1. Okay. So meaning that here N berubah. Okay, T pun berubah tapi P maintain. How about volume? So here volume dia tak ada mention apa-apa. So uh, dan di dalam bekas yang sama. So we assume that this volume are constant tu lah. Okay, so between, baru saya cakap tadi kan, between T dengan N. Tak ada relationship kat sini. So how you want to have this relationship? You combine this together. So we know that P and V constant. So P constant, P2 constant, V constant, V also constant. So dia akan jadi 1 over N1 T1. 1 over N2 T2 and so for N2. Okay. So clear eh. Ah, ni 1.15 ni pun uh, abaikan lah eh. Kita assume nak standardize kita tak payah ada 0.15. Cukup je 273. Okay. So clear eh. Okay. Cuba jawab ni. Cukup yang 4. Question one. Aerosol container containers often carry the warning that they should not be heated. Suppose in the container will fill with gas. So we have pressure here. We have temperature. The container may rupture if the pressure exceeds 8 atm. So ni P yang kedua. Determine the temperature. Uh, again, kita tak ada any relationship between P and T. So you boleh buat sama macam yang kat sini lah eh. And 
and here b b and n so sampai kira eh ada dah dapat ke b t n So you want to calculate for T2 T2 Okay, dah ke? Dah Okay, dapat sabar eh Uh, tadi asalnya jawapan ni tak ada ha. Jawapan ni tak ada pun point-point dia Okay so awak just refer Sekejap hmm. Hmm, Tak ada So yang ni abaikan je lain ni eh. Okay 596 So basically uh, Combine gas law macam tu lah Tujuan dia kita Maksudnya you can have uh, Any relationship between Let's say ni memang tak ada dalam law yang you belajar Ayo uh, akan pakai that one and kita cancel mana yang let's say constant lah. Okay. Uh, nak pakai semua pun boleh. Nak dapatkan that relationship. Okay. So now we move to 4.2. Okay. The next subtopic. Okay. So here you should be able uh, ideal gas equation eh. You should be able to explain qualitatively the condition necessary for an ideal gas. Okay. Maksudnya untuk explain apa condition sesuai untuk dapatkan this ideal gas okay and then determine the molar mass okay molar mass molar volume or density using ideal gas okay before this you you boleh agaklah sebenarnya now bila ada involving mole you boleh play around lagi kan bila ada mole you boleh cari molar mass and then bila you ada relationship between volume dengan mass, ah uh, you boleh dapat density, ah uh, something like that lah. Okay, and then uh, uh, use ideal gas to relate PVT and N uh, to solve stoichiometric problem. So this stoichiometric problem basically uh, similar as what you have learned uh, in chapter one. Okay. I hope you remember lah apa maksud stoichiometry eh. Where if you, let's say you have uh, 2A plus B dapat 3C. Kita tahu 2A will uh, react with 1B produce 3C. Uh, ada ratio kat situ kan. Uh, kita akan pakai juga this stoichiometric dalam uh, gas lah. The involving gas. Maksudnya sebab gas pun you boleh cari mole kan. Uh, so you boleh akan pakai balik uh, that stoichiometry ya. Eh. Okay. So ideal gas is actually gas that exhibit linear re relationship among P, T, V and N. Okay. Ideal gas is characterized as below. First, no attraction or repelling between molecules of an ideal gas. Second, no, the ideal gas volume is negligible compared with the container. Okay. So saya nak explain dulu kat sini eh. Ideal ni maksudnya apa? Maksudnya perfect. Okay, sangat perfect. Basically, sebenarnya in reality, no ideal gas actually exists. Tak ada pun sebenarnya. Tak ada yang perfect. Uh, selalu kita cakap orang pun, nobody is perfect. Uh, sama, gas pun tak perfect. Okay, tapi kenapa ada ideal gas ni? Because of um, uh, most simple gases, for example, hydrogen, helium, behave nearly ideally at ordinary temperatures and pressure. Temperature dan pressure yang uh, ordinary yang biasa ni Dia behave menghampiri ideal So that's why um, End up kita buat assumption Kita pakailah ideal gas equation Okay And ada assumption lah yang kita buat kat situ Apa assumption dia yang ni? Yang dua ni The first one tadi No attraction or repelling between molecules Maksudnya kat sini Dalam satu container tu Okay, you ada satu container kan. Lepas tu you ada gas dalam tu. So, uh, gas ni kalau you belajar tadi kinetic energy ke apa tu, dia akan berlanggar dengan, dengan wall of container. Dinding-dinding container. Okay, itu ya. Tapi dia takkan ada attraction 
atau repel Attraction tak ada, repel pun tak ada between molecules Sesama molecules, tak ada Okay, itu assumption untuk ideal gas lah But kalau ada, uh, dia dah jadi real gas You akan belajar juga nanti real gas ni Okay, satu lagi assumption The ideal gas volume, ni volume dia pula eh Is negligible, negligible ni kita abaikan As compared to the container volume You perasan tak, bila you kira PV lah, combined gas law yang ada V ni V yang you ambil adalah volume of container Ya, yeah? volume bekas, you ambil volume bekas You tak ambil volume gas You tak ambil volume ni, sebiji-sebiji ni berapa volume dia tak So that's why ideal gas, volume gas tu sendiri is negligible Sebab dia terlalu kecil, okay, bila kecil kita tak abaikan lah Sebab tu dia bergerak-gerak-gerak, so dia assume volume gas tu adalah Merangkumi uh, bekas tu lah So you imagine kat mana awak berada, kat dalam bilik masing-masing Saya pun kat bilik sini ya, so maksudnya gas yang dekat dalam ruang ni Kita ambil volume dia adalah volume Bilik ni lah ha, macam tu, tu maksud dia eh Okay, so dua benda ni sangat penting lah Okay, characterization of for the ideal gas So, uh, ideal gas ni basically adalah uh, combination Dia macam combine gas law tu juga We combine P, V, T and N Okay, and kita relatekan dengan single constant We call it gas constant as R, R huruf besar Okay, so in SI units, okay, R ada dua value yang you perlu ingat First is 8.314, another one is 0.0821 So both have two different units Unit dia berbeza eh, saya akan tunjuk nanti, okay Masa bila kita nak pakai yang lebih sesuai untuk dua-dua ni And the formula is PV equals to NRT Okay, so nanti pun kita akan tunjuk in details this one Okay, so this is known as the ideal gas Because uh, describe the behavior of ideal lah So okay, temperature in Kelvin eh So ni tadi ada Ball, Charles and Avogadro Kita combine all together So V and T, P kan So nak combine together is equal to constant So this constant is actually R yang kita masukkan Okay, so you dapatlah PV equals to NRT So now every time nanti later lepas ni lah Bila you masuk chapter 4 je kaki You calculate lah guna PV NRT ha, Maksudnya this one lah, this formula Okay, PV equals to NRT They combine all together So Macam mana kita nak dapat that value of R tu sebenarnya kan Okay, that one is actually came from the STP I know you have learned this one in chapter 1 I hope you still remember STP, Standard Temperature Pressure Where the temperature is 0 degree Celsius So now bila kita uh, uh, apa? Kita make a conclusion daripada 0 degree Celsius is actually 273 Kelvin kan Absolute temperature dia And then atmosphere is 180 M Okay And at STP we know that one mole of that gas occupied 22.4 liter So based on this PV equals to NRT Okay, you boleh dapatkan sebenarnya apa value of R according to STP Contohlah, R you jadikan subjek You derive the R equals to PV over NT So, you masukkan the value So, you akan dapat, okay, P is 1 ATM Okay, so P is 1 ATM kat mana this one? STP kan? Volume is 22.4 kat mana? Yang ini, mole untuk satu mol kan, STP 273 is 0 degree Celsius You masukkan all the value, you akan dapat this value So inilah adalah value yang tadi saya tunjuk lah Eh, jauh pula perginya, ha, this one 0.0821 Okay um, Dah sesudah kata tanya ni, kena hafal ke? Uh, saya tak suruh hafal tapi saya suruh you ingat Ah, uh, Beza ya, eh, hafal dengan ingat. Hafal ni, you hafal, uh, you jalan, terlanggar batu jatuh, you lupa. Uh, mengingat ni maksudnya with understanding. So that's why, kalau you ingat, you you tiba-tiba, okay, eh lupalah 0082 berapa eh. You can derive. Daripada sini lah, you derive according to STP. Okay, itu cara dia. Daripada sini, you akan dapat unit yang tepat. Liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin Okay, 
Kita ada lagi satu R kan? So another R. Okay. Ni lain sikit. Basically the pressure using Pascal and the volume is using meter cube and mole tetap sama STP kan? Uh, N273. So pressure this one is actually 1 atm yang you dah convert jadi pascal and uh, meter cube yang you dah convert daripada 22.4 liter jadi meter cube. Basically that's why kita ajar awak conversion unit awal-awal tadi. So you convert ni then you akan dapat 8.314. Kalau you tengok kat sini 8.314 tapi <laughs> unit dia adalah joule per mole kelvin. So basically this joule is pascal m3. Okay. Cuba kita, saya boleh cakap awal lah. This one kita banyak pakai uh, bukan dalam PV NRT. Kita akan pakai juga nanti. Uh, kita akan pakai sebab ada joule kan yang melibatkan energi. Joule kan melibatkan energi kan. Cuma you boleh pakai dalam PV NRT. Cuma susahnya nanti you kena tukar lah. Jadi pascal, jadi uh, M apa, cube macam tu lah. Okay. Okay, so um, for this slide, okay, saya lupa je untuk statement yang ni abaikan dulu eh. For me, this is a statement for real gas. So abaikan je dulu eh. Yang ni pada saya lah slide ni cuma nak tunjuk uh, even though you have different types of uh, gases, okay, you have different masses, different density, kan. But uh, at STP, okay, you have Uh, mole, uh, same mole, same pressure, same temperature and same volume. Okay, basically macam itulah. That one is uh, volume tu kita panggil standard molar volume. Okay, ada perkataan molar kat situ. Ha, itu at STP lah tu. Okay, so tengok contoh. Calculate the volume in liters of CO2 that would be formed at temperature this one. If 1.19 atm of pressure is applied and this one mass solid carbon dioxide evaporate. Calculate the volume in liters. Okay, so PV NRT. Dia nak volume. Pressure dah ada 1.19 atm. Mol tak ada tapi boleh cari sebab ada mass. Okay, that's why you bahagi dengan molar mass. And then R, gas constant. And then T is T23 Kelvin. This one. So basically kalau you tengok um, unit ATM uh, mol mol lah kan. Uh, yang ni Kelvin of course kita akan pakai 0.08 to 1. Sebab unit dia you end up nanti you boleh cancel. Okay you tengok sini. ATM. ATM Kelvin dengan Kelvin. Mol dengan mol yang tinggal unit adalah liter. So that's why volume you dalam liter. Okay. So beza dengan kalau you pakai 8.314 tadi. Unit dia pasal uh, unit dia adalah dalam pascal dengan m uh, cube kan. So kalau you nak pakai juga dengan 8.314 you have to convert lah. Okay. Panjang sikit cerita dia kan. So better you just use 0.0821 eh. Okay. Cuba jawab ni. Eh betul ke ni. Ah, cuba jawab ni. 1000 liter steel storage tank contains 88.5 kilogram of methane gas CH4. If the temperature is 25, calculate the pressure inside the tank. Okay, cuba.
Okey. Dah eh. Saya assume dah lah eh. Okey. Kita tengok eh. So. First. Uh, of course. Uh, just. Uh, extract the information. You have volume. You have pressure. You have mass. You have uh, mole. Uh, eh, sorry. You nak cari mole. Sebab tak tahu kan. Sebenarnya yang kita nak cari adalah pressure kan. Okay. Tapi dia bagi mass. So temperature and R. Yang ni lah. So of course we must start with mole dulu. Then you cari mole. And then this mole you masukkan dalam N. Then you can substitute all the value to get pressure. Eh. So pressure uh, the last value. The unit should be in atmosphere. Okay. Dapat sama eh. 135. Dapat. Okay. How about this one? Cuba. SF6 is a colorless and orderless gas. Commonly used as an insulator in electronic equipment. Calculate the pressure. Okay, did the highlight kat sini. This one is the moles. So, P berapa? Volume. Temperature. Okay, cuba kira. <coughs> Okay, dah eh. So, saya sementara saya teringat ni kan. I just want, I would like to share lah uh, my experience uh, marking uh, for previous students lah. I mean your seniors kan. Uh, for PVNRT ni selalu, bukanlah, bukanlah selalu. Every time ada je uh, student dalam maybe dalam beberapa orang tu adalah dalam sepuluh orang yang ada problem uh, ni apa kita panggil ni ya uh, problem nak transfer dari kiri ke kanan okay PV equals to NRT uh, sampai nak cari P uh, terbalik terbalik dia buat dia jadi V over NRT lah uh, nampak macam betul tapi sebenarnya tak betul kan nah uh, so saya just nak remind to you lah eh. okay kalau dapat soalan macam ni yang nak Nak transfer from left to right Sama je bukan untuk ni je untuk calculation chapter 1 Saya tengok juga soalan test uh, Macam dari kiri ke kanan positif, negatif semua tunggal langgang Okay so uh, I think maybe Yelah saya rasa you bukan tak tahu Saya rasa you tahu cuma maybe Some sorts of panic Okay panic lepas tu careless lah I, I would say careless mistakes kan So yang menyebabkan Sebab bila you terbalik Jawapan akhir you salah. So macam tak ada apa markah yang kita boleh bagi kan. So sayanglah. Okay. So please be careful lah eh. Bila you nak tukar-tukar tu eh. Okay. Eh sorry. And RT over B. Uh, over V. So ni jawapan ni kan. So just masukkan lah yang ni lebih straightforward. Just that this temperature you must convert to Kelvin. Okay. Sebab kalau tak convert, salah jawapan dia. Sebab you punya R value ada Kelvin kat sini supaya boleh cancel unit. Okay. Take note lah kat situ eh. Okay. Cuba jawab yang ni pula. Check point seven. Calculate the volume in liter occupied by 7.4 gram of ammonia at STP. Nah ni dia specific ni STP. Dia baca soalan chapter one je ni. Cuma mungkin chapter 1 kita nak mol. Ha, ni kita nak volume. Cuba kita.
Okay, so saya dia maybe lebih simple lah. Dapatkan, just dapatkan molamin so of ammonia. 7.4 divided by 17. So you dapat mole of ammonia. So kita tahu relationship dia tadi. 1 mole uh, is 22.4. So kalau mole ni, you darab je lah dengan 22.4 eh. So you dapat the volume. Okay, saya so ni senang je lah straightforward eh. Okay, so next. Tadi uh, gas uh, uh, maksudnya based on PV and RT je lah. Okay, so uh, kita ada juga application. We applied this other gas equation to calculate molar mass or density. Okay, so first uh, we move to the uh, molar mass dulu eh. So we derive from the PV equals to NRT. We derive as PV equals to MRT over MM. Remember, so N is equals to mass over molar mass kan. So this N kita tambah M molar mass. Okay, so daripada sini actually you can calculate for molar mass. So basically kita derive je lah daripada PV and RT tu. So then that's why you can get MM molar mass is equals to MRT over PV. Okay, macam contoh kat sini calculate the molar mass of gases element uh, uh, if 0 0.408 gram of the gas occupied so dia bagi volume, pressure and temperature dia nak molar mass. So kalau you tahu you boleh straight away terus dapat uh, this method lah guna cara ni molar mass terus je masukkan uh, the value lah mass uh, RT over PV. So you straight away dapat molar mass. Okay, kalau kalau you tak tahu pun sebenarnya tak ada isu Just using this PV equals to NRT Cuma dia step dia ada panjang sikit lah kan So you dapatkan dulu N So daripada N you dapatkan dia punya bola mass Tak ada, tak ada masalah kan sebenarnya sama je Kalau you ing, ingat this formula You can straight away kalau tak just using this method Okay and then We can also derive density Eh sorry <coughs> density eh. So density is mass over volume. Okay so mass over volume in this case uh, according to the unit yang yang uh, sedia ada lah. So is gram per liter. Okay so here from PV equals to NRT. So kerja eh. Yang ni abaikan eh. Saya rasa dekat awak yang asal pun kat sini urut D, D kan. Sebab saya tiba-tiba saya tak berapa faham this one. Okay. So PV equals to NRT. PV equals to MRT over MM kan. Okay. Ni yang derive tadi kan. So kita nak relatekan dengan this one. Okay. Volume kan. Contoh belah kiri ni ada volume kan. So V equals to MRT over PMM kan. P pindah sini kan. Yang ni. Okay now kalau you rearrange you akan dapat contoh eh M ni mass sebab kita nak dapat macam ni kan mass over volume. So you akan dapat mass over volume ni bawa ke sini the rest yang ni bawa ke sini kan. So mass over volume is equals to yang ni bawa ke sini dia akan jadi terbalik kan. Dia akan jadi PMM. PMM ni duduk ke atas M bahagi RT ni duduk kat bawah. Okay. Daripada situ you boleh terus dapat density. Okay. So that's why this basically inilah ha, benda yang sama lah sebenarnya kan. PMM over RT. Daripada situ you boleh juga dapatkan MM based on density. Ah, Kan boleh play around lah kat situ eh. So here let's say calculate the density of carbon dioxide and then dia bagilah Uh, pressure and temperature. So by using this, okay. So you boleh dapatkan uh, P dah ada uh, molar mass. You boleh cari lah for CO2 kan. And then dapat kat sini. So R and T dia dah bagi. This one. So this is the value for density eh. Okay. And let's see lah. Macam mana ni? Tak ingat formula. Okay, you can, uh, never mind, you can always use PV and RT. Okay, as long as you tahu density tu formula dia sebenarnya apa. Formula dia adalah mass over volume kan. So here, V equals to NRT over P. Okay, first you cari dulu volume. Okay, you masukkan. Okay, now mole tak ada. Kalau you tengok kat sini. Tak ada cerita pasal mole. Tapi kan, um, kalau tak ada cerita, dia boleh buat assumption. 
Sebab kita tahu molamis carbon dioxide 44 gram per mol kan. Kat sini sahaja dah membawa maksud every each mol of CO2 consists of 44 gram. Kat sini saja dah membawa masuk this one. So you can assume that one mole of CO2 berat dia 44 gram. So ini eh. One mole of CO2 berat dia 44 gram. So N kat sini you letaklah as one mole. Okay. So the rest you boleh letak and then you dapat volume. So dapat volume kat sini. Ni volume lah 27.2. M tadi sebab kita assume one mole berat dia 44. That's why M ni kita letak 44. Okay, then you dapat density yang sama. Okay, so clear eh. Kalau you tak ingat formula, you boleh also guna this one lah. But this one, you have to add this assumption and mesti ingat formula for density. Okay, cuba jawab ni. <coughs> a chemist has synthesized a greenish yellow gases compound of chlorine and oxygen and finds that its density is 7.71 gram per liter. Okay. Ni density kan? This one is temperature. This one is pressure. Calculate the molar mass of the compound. Okay. Cuba kira. Okay, dah ke? So, kalau you dapat ni, okay. Uh, ni kalau straight away you are using the formula lah eh. So, molar mass equals to DRT over P. So, you masukkan the density, the R value, the T and also the pressure. You terus straight away dapat uh, molar mass lah. Okay. Ataupun you boleh guna PV NRT tapi panjang sikit lah cara dia sebab kat sini dia bagi dah straight away value of density. So as for me, kalau you guna PV NRT, you boleh guna cara yang ini tadi. This one. Alternative solution eh. You dapatkan dulu, uh, maksudnya this density you keluarkan pula the uh, value of mass and volume. Dia, dia terbalik lah untuk dapatkan molar mass. Okay. The simplest way is just straight away using the formula lah kat sini ya. Eh. Okay, any questions so far? Ada soalan tak? Not yet. Tak ada. Tak ada. Okay, I think uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't want to continue for this psychometry. Uh, yang ni saya akan masuk dalam uh, kelas satu jam esok. Boleh? Boleh. Boleh. Okay. So kita habis awal sikit lah eh hari ni. So kejap. Mm, okay. So uh, tak ada apa eh. So far I think because uh, for this chapter 4, eh, for the early stages I think because you pun dah familiar a little bit for a few laws yang dah belajar. Uh, 
uh, macam boys law, child law tu kan The rest tu just fit in je Yang penting uh, unit lah eh Unit, conversion unit and then a few a guest constant A few uh, conversion tu apa Unit tu lah you kena tahu uh, Ada rezeki uh, dia akan bagi dalam soalan Tapi just um, uh, prepare for the worst lah Assume dia tak bagi. So you have to prepare the uh, TOR value equals to 1 ATM, uh, R value tu berapa, uh, okay. Sebab ada sebelum ni biasanya tak bagi pun, okay. Okay so tak ada apa-apa with that I will end our session today.